Hello, Trick fans. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Uh, beautiful Wednesday morning here. Um, as Weatherman said, it's going to start turning nice out here. Uh, 60s, 60s tomorrow. Uh, sounds like a good opportunity for you to get out and just walk around a little bit. Uh, remember, please do continue to practice your social distancing. Um, get us through this as quickly as possible. Um, and just be disciplined on that. Uh, today what we're going to do is, uh, I asked you yesterday, we went through some problems yesterday. Uh, today, uh, what I ask you to do for homework is the two problems on the back side. Uh, to just give you additional practice in regards to uh, the material we've been covering, you can pre pretty much follow what we did on the front side and be able to solve the problems on the back side here. But we will go through them today. Um, I've also posted some homework for you, um, basically the same types of problems um, that you can work through. Uh, that we've been dealing with the last two or three days. Uh, we'll continue just to practice these um, as we go forward and hopefully we'll get quite proficient at it um, in regards to just getting through the material. We have our function f of x is equal to 4 plus 2 cosine pi over 4 x plus 1. Once again, one thing to remember here is that our variable is in x, so we need to make sure our calculator is in radian mode. Okay, so you need to make sure, I always check to make sure, oh, I'm in degree mode, so I need to go down to radian mode, and now I'm good, because I would have gave us all wrong answers here because I was in the degree mode. So you always have to remember, check to make sure what my variable is, is it an x in radians or theta in degrees. Okay, always try to remember that. So what we're given here is the f of x is equal to a value of three. So subbing in, using our substitution principle, we have three is equal to four plus two cosine pi over four x plus one. Okay? Just subbing in our value of 3 for f of x because that's what it's told f of x is equal to. Now that's different to if I gave you f at 3, what does this equal? Now I'm saying my x value is 3 and I would put in 3 for this and solve for f of x. But we are not doing that right now. Okay, that was a couple of extra problems we had to do yesterday. This That's a lot easier to do than that. It's a lot less work. So, first thing you're always going to want to do, okay, you're going to subtract this constant over and you're going to divide by this coefficient. Okay, so we're going to subtract a 4 over to give us negative 1 is equal to 2 cosine pi over 4 x plus 1. And hopefully you've done this and you can just sort of follow along a little bit and check what you've done and make sure you did it correctly. Okay, our next step is I'm multiplying by two, so we're gonna divide by two, divide by two, and once again over here, I would suggest just leaving it negative one tooth is equal to cosine pi over four, x plus one. Um, I wouldn't worry about dealing with it and clicking the clack and trying to get a decimal at this point. Just leave it as a fraction because the next step will we'll take care of the fraction and we'll be able to get a decimal at that point. Our next thing we need to get rid of is a cosine, and how we get rid of cosine is inverse cosine. So this is where you can do the inverse cosine of the fraction that you created here. And once again, if I'm going too fast, if I'm going too fast, just hit your pause button. If you're trying to follow along and I'm going too fast, just hit your pause button, okay? And then resume whenever you're ready for it. So we have the inverse cosine of negative one, two. So now this is where I come to my calculator. Need to make sure and see it's quit out of this. It's quit, maybe. There we go. Make sure I'm in the correct mode, radian mode, I'm good to go. Quit second cosine of negative one divided by two and hit enter. And we get 2.0943, 
And you can just round it to the second decimal place, 2.09. So we have 2.09 is equal to pi over 4 x plus 1. And what you'll learn to do is leave a little space in here because we'll use that space here in a few minutes. Okay, the process of taking the inverse cosine. When we take the inverse cosine, as we talked about yesterday, we get two solutions. This came down to our calculator, which we call the principal value. That is correct. Okay, that is the principal value. And then we have the second value for the inverse cosine, which is the opposite. So we have the opposite, which is negative, oops, I give a little bit more space there, negative 2.09 is equal to pi over 4, x plus 1. Okay, as we did dealt with yesterday, we can use our multiplication principle. We need to get rid of pi over 4 and pi over 4. We can multiply by its reciprocal. If we multiply something by a reciprocal, we get a value of 1. So we have 4 over pi, 4 over pi, 4 over pi, and 4 over pi. Okay, which gives us the 4 over pi is go bye-bye. These go by by. So we can multiply the value that we had in our calculator, 2.09, 0.09 times 4 divided by pi, 2.66. So we have 2.66 is equal to x plus 1. And the nice thing about the cosine is this is just the negative of it. So if I multiply negative 2.09 times 4 divided by pi, I just get the negative of this. Negative 2.66 is equal to x plus 1. And the final step is to get rid of the addition by 1. So we can subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1. So over here, x is equal to 1.66 plus or minus the period n. Here, x is gonna equal to negative 3.66, plus or minus the period n. Now, as we talked about yesterday, how we calculate the period, it's not just two pi or the 360 degrees, because we have a function now that we are dealing with. This is our b value. So we have two pi, divided by pi over 4, which is like multiplying by 4 over pi. The pi's go bye-bye. So we're left with 2 times 4, which is a value of 8. So we have 1.66 plus or minus 8n, and negative 3.66 plus or minus 8n. That is our period n. Hopefully you came down to it. And if you're off by a decimal, if you have 1.65 or 1.67, don't sweat it. Don't, don't, it's not a big deal. Or negative 3.65 or negative 3.64. Don't worry about those little things. If you show me this process here, we are good to go. First three positives. Okay, this, if I subtract eight, I go negative. This is negative, if I add eight, I'm gonna be a positive, but it's gonna be bigger than this. So we have 1.66, and then taking our negative 3.66 plus eight, that will give me my next positive. 4.34, and then to go from one to three, we play leapfrog, we add period, which is a value of 8, so we have 9.66 is our third value. Once again, we have graphed, we have graphed these functions here. We have graphed them, and it is a continuous curve that goes on in, on indefinitely. Okay, it continues on indefinitely, going out to the left and to the right. 
So we have an infinite number of values that would work. All we're doing is we're pulling out the first three values here, and we're drawing a, this would be drawing a line at y equals point, or y equals three through the graph, and we're hitting all those intersection points if you remember back to our initial day of what we did with respect to these notes. The inverse sine. Once again, we are given that f of x is equal to five. So we have five is equal to six plus two sine pi over five x plus two. Okay, the initial steps are going to be the same each and every time. I'm gonna subtract this over and divide by this. Oh boy, I'm gonna come down to the same value. That wasn't very good as planning. So we have negative one is equal to two sine pi over five x plus two. Not very good planning on my part, my bad. Divide by two by two. So we have negative one tooth is equal to the sine of pi over five x plus two. Sorry about that. Okay, the next step will be, once again, we have to get rid of our trig function sine. How we get rid of sine, we take the inverse sine. So we have the inverse sine of negative one tooth. It's not gonna be the same as up top because that was the inverse cosine. So we have inverse sine of negative one divided by two, close the parenthesis. We get negative 0.52. Is equal to pi over 5 x plus 2. Okay, now comes the tricky part over here with the sine. Okay, how we find the second value with the sine? Inverse cosine, we take the principal value and its sub and its opposite. Inverse sine, we take the principal value and its supplement. Well, dealing with the radians, the supplement. Is pi minus the principal value. We have to watch here because our principal value is negative. So we have 3.14 minus a negative 0.52. Got a little boom chain going on here. Okay, so we can add, we can add the 0.52. So we have 3.14 plus 0.52. So we get 3.66 as our supplement. So we have our supplement of 3.66 is equal to pi over 5 x plus 2. Now becomes the exact same thing as we did before. Got to get rid of pi over five, so we multiply by five over pi, five over pi, five over pi, and five over pi. That will cross out these pi over fives. So once again, we get our calculator. We have negative 0.52. I'm gonna multiply by five and divide by pi. So we get negative 0.83 is equal to x plus two. And then we have 3.66, 3.66 times five divided by pi. We get 5.83 is equal to x plus 2. And we can subtract 2. So we get x is equal to negative 2.83 plus or minus the period n. And over here we get 3.83 plus or minus the period n. Our B value 
is pi over 5. So we take 2 pi divided by pi over 5. So we flip and multiply, the pi's go bye bye. So we have 5 times 2, so we have a value of 10n. We have 10 N. So first three positives. This one's negative. I've added 10 to it. It gives me uh, a bigger number than 3.83. So our first number is 3.83. Then we have negative 2.83 plus 10. So it gives me 7.17 is our second value. And then we play leapfrog, go from one to three. We add the period, which is 10. So we have 13.83 is our third value. Hopefully you worked through the problems. Hopefully you came down to close to what we had. If you notice what I did, when I found this first value over here, I used a value that was already in the calculator, so this may round a little bit something different than you. You might have 2.84, 2.82, no big deal, no big deal. Um, over here, I used the 3.66 then, so it may come down to something a little bit closer to you. But once again, if you're off by a little bit, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hopefully this, you were able to work through the problems and come down to the same solutions that we had. Uh, what I put on, uh, classroom is I put on a worksheet um, that deals with same types of problems um, tomorrow I'll come in we'll go over a couple of those um, as we go through it what I would like you to do is I would like you to work on that I also provided solutions for you uh, so you can work to a solution you can see what I've done also with that uh, please try to keep up with the material um, I hope all is going well with your family once again I hope all is going well with you and you're staying uh, sickness free um, in your household and your family staying sickness free also. Please cr continue to try to uh, practice social distancing. Uh, once again, I miss you guys. I wish you were back in school. I wish we were back in school. Um, I miss uh, being able to interact and talk to you guys. Um, so please just get through this as quickly as possible um, so we can get try to get back to some sort of normalcy. Uh, but please try to practice your social distancing once again. Uh, supposed to be pretty nice the next couple days. Sort of has a little uh, calling to, from the double D down there uh, to be able to get yourself some ice cream maybe. Um, but please still remember to keep your social distancing. Uh, stay safe out there. Um, if you have any questions, once again, email me the questions, send comments to the questions. I may have figured out my issues that I have with the Google Classroom. I may have figured it out. Uh, I was able to get another document in another class um, that I got to work. So you may get to see it one more time. I don't know. Uh, we may, we may, I might venture in there one more time to be able to try to get uh, some information from you. Um, so please, if you do see that, go ahead and see, humor me and see if I did it correctly this time. Um, everybody stay safe and you all have a good day. Adios.